Mm, I kind of look like Lieutenant Dan. I didn't put that together. You run like him. Mm, mm, Help! Sweat Equity Podcast, the number one comedy business podcast in the world. You sure about that? Stars and bars, baby. America. Happy birthday. Are you talking to me right I just, now? I thought Who you were talking gonna, to? I, I, you look like America you're gonna, won't answer. You look like you're about to say something. No, why? I don't know. Zupiak. I was doing like a thing with the head thing. Our uh, episode sponsored by Zupiak, the first search optimized AI writer. Look, if you listen to any other episodes, I'm not going to give you the same old rigmarole, but they just came out with some new features that I've been playing around with. You can content remix. You can go find competitors' good blog posts, remix it as your own, and you get that SEO quality post uh zepyak.com z-u-p-y-a-k.com promo code sweat like keith sweat uh gets you the you sure about that oh i'm sure all right ceo's named eric too that's what i know some people call me cool eric eric that's how we set you up in the business some people call me cool eric our other sponsors i heard my name i was like oh i gotta pay attention we got links in the episode description uh flow desk squarespace call rail linkedin premium and bloom invoicing let's get this episode going howdy time sweat equity Listening to the Sweat Equity Podcast. Can we talk about bandanas for a second here? Yeah. Like hot bandana you know, top? Yeah, I mean I was just messing with mine. It's like weird how dramatic the look changes wherever you have the knot. Yeah, oh yeah. Like this is like apparently how you should wear it. And then it goes to like Vietnam uh playing Russian roulette style oh, on the side hunter? yeah right Ugh. that scene makes me and sweat. then you got like tupac's mom yeah in the front right why does that or, change or, so much like what or, a dr- drastic change or your uh or, lady cooking in the kitchen you know worst blindfold ever but that's really all of them i want it's more than that maybe it's like the earring thing in the 90s yeah that's how you know people are gay yeah, except I always heard opposite stuff like every other time someone brought it up. I mean, yes, if a man is wearing this and, and you're not Tupac. <laughs> I feel like RuPaul's done that. Like, just like. It's close. But like, like, has to tussle it out like it's an Alabama swoop, you know, nice. haircut. Yeah. You know, those guys that have reverse mullets that just constantly do this. Yeah, I'm going to do that the whole show. Yeah. Very reactive. Bieber, the Bieber haircut, for those that don't know. Yeah. The beaver back in the day, I should say. Like it's got guy bangs. It's short in the back and then long in the front with a little there tilde. Yes, perfect. I think you look cute. Thanks. Me too. I was uh, <laughs> I was sporting that that line that yellow color neon one last night. Went for a jog. Fucking rained like crazy. I'm so dumb. You never feel dumber than halfway into a jog. You're like, all right, time to turn around. It's right. Like, <laughs> oh, that's right. I live in Florida and it's July. And then I was like, I'll just wait it out. It's 20 minutes. Um, and then it was 45 minutes later. Yeah. I'm sitting in a park by myself under like a gazebo. I would never say I'm waiting it out. I'm like, it's going to rain forever now. Might as well get home and get this process started. Well, I looked at the map. Dry in my draw. And the map was lying to me. Uh, I looked at several different maps and it didn't show a lot. <laughs> what, the weather map? I I was like, well, you needed a map on your run, <laughs> like you didn't know oh, where no, to go. No, 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 I'm not. I didn't run that. <laughs> the far. weather map. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. Um. Well, I uh, I don't know if this episode. Will yes, come I out. know I'm popping my gum. Don't care. This episode will come out before the last one we just recorded, but uh, why? Previous to this, I don't know. Are, do, are we doing them in order? Who knows? I why just, would you do that? I'm just saying, man. It's no, it's a mystery. Oh, because this is the one that we're doing, quote unquote, your stuff. No, I don't know. The one where we talk about Skinwalker Ranch. 
That's coming later I still when of, I get around to I it. I think of hookers uh, made into lampshade every time you say the name Skinwalker Ranch. Mm. You know what's perfect about the bandana is it blocks my view of you. It's oh, like a blinder. That's so mean. You're just making me upset. I'm wearing all American flag stuff, so it's pretty cool to look over here. Like give it a yeah, give it a gander, dude. All right, that was pretty cool. Yeah, it's pretty sweet. Fine. These colors don't run. Um, the uh, what, so. No, we can we can bore everybody with more UFO stuff. No, no. What happened was is I was I w- talking about cutting edge, fucking amazing things, and you wanted to talk about Doritos. Uh, yeah, you're talking about Skinwalker Cool Ranch. Right. Right. And you're talking about hookers. What's cooler than hookers? No, just made into lampshades by like a John Wayne Gacy kind of guy. It's more interesting than Doritos. I don't know. Man. No matter what dark place you take it to. Well, let's bring it together. I'll harmonize us. I there's a lot. I do know it. of a lot of people that have seen a Dorito shaped uh, UFO. That's true. That's the Doritos version. Yeah. They have, see, uh, look at you. You got have, happy again. They have their te- <laughs> secret Doritos technology. You think Cool Ranch? You think that came from Earth? Please. Makes no sense. And when you get a bat, Cool Ranch and it's you- blue, obviously that's alien tech. Here, here's how I have a fat, fat uh, kind of palate. I'm like, I get giddy if you get a Cool Ranch bag that has a lot of like little speckles on it. What? Oh, like just the design of a. <laughs> no, there, there's like a more stuff, more flavor speckles. You know, it's like green and yellow and red and all that. Yeah. It's there's sometimes there's more than normal You're amount. So fat. Oh, dude. You're such a fat person. I could have gone fat for sure, like when? fat kid. I could have. I was I was borderline, like fourth grade. I was like teetering right about there. What timeline are we in right now? My life. Where you didn't go fat. Oh. <laughs> Ooh. I'm working on it. You told me to call you fat all the time. I know, but I'm still going to say, still going to get my feelings hurt. Oh, okay. That's part of the process is to shame. Oh, you're putting that on me, huh? I can take it. Uh, now, you're, now you're like a like fucking <laughs> Mexican <do> gangster. <laughs> well, yeah. MS-13, Solo. baby. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I'd like to say this podcast we are for MS thirteen. Yes, we Please are don't come sponsored by them. We love or them so much. All all Mexico, all the cartels, Central really, American gangs. You know, whichever you, one, if they hear it, whichever one has the most done. Well, if you really think about is it, is our favorite. They might put the, the most, most sweat brutal. equity into their business than anybody. Yes, that's true. They do. You yeah. know, it's hot in those jungles. Well, you don't make a lot for a while. You know, you're you're uh, you're a lookout at right. first. Yeah, exactly. You got to work your way up. Then you're a dime bag guy. Right. Got to bury something. Could be anything. Might be money. Then you, you know? work your way up to mule. Yep. Then maybe maybe you're some muscle later, but you got to be trusted. Yep. Yeah. Got to be trusted before you do the important stuff. And they, and the. the nefarious thing is they got to know you have a family so that they can execute them if you fuck up if you fuck them over yep yep yep. that's crucial to the infrastructure that's forward evil thinking Mm -hmm. you know right um i I was gonna give you kudos on a good job of of shooting that special you haven't seen it yet i haven't seen it but uh since you said we got enough i'm trusting that (laughs) we got enough um you did say we had enough Look, we're only good. we only need twenty nine minutes, really. Right. He just he said that because you know in the middle of the show I walked on the stage and said that's enough. Yeah, you. I mean, that's how you direct. That's a good director to do. You're interactive. I didn't have the big you know cane thing like I wanted. A cane? Pull you, yeah, pull you off by oh. your neck. Oh, the uh, Sandman from Apollo. That's what it's called. Yeah, the guy's called Sandman. Oh, no, I'm talking about just the the utensil. The hook. Yeah. You know, the little bow peep sheep hook. Yes. Yeah. Uh, that guy's called the Sandman. You know Sounds how, cooler to call it a Sandman. You know how I know? Because <laughs> I've, I've done hood shows before, and there's a, you know, they have their own Sandman. Found, find out. Oh. If you're a corny white guy doing puns that they don't like, I've gotten They Sandman. might have instituted that just for you. Oh, yeah. I think they went. Who wants to be Sandman? I think they went to a pinch of penny next Who's door. Sandman, this guy. They went and got a pool, like that pool hook thing. Right. They just sent them out during your then set. They, and then they returned it for yeah. credit. Yeah. Probably won't need this again. Yeah. One time use. Shout out, Pinch a Penny Pool. What was, was my what was my shout out for? What was my kudos for? I was saying you did a great job 
Not oh only, yeah. Not only shooting. That's why it out, didn't feel like real kudos. Doing a guerrilla style kind of shoot. Yeah. Uh, like we didn't even get into the building on the second show until 20 minutes before. That was cool. That was really cool. Yeah, and the AC hadn't been turned on yet. Mm-hmm. 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 Yep. Yep. I thought it was. I thought it was gonna. I felt like I was in a sauna. I was like, it's gonna cool down eventually. Well, turns like, out it didn't cool down. You know, a lot of people told me they were cold and, and what? hot. I had. I've had so many mixed reviews from the shows. Uh, just. Content wise, but also like the room wise, it's like all over the place. So who's giving you content reviews? You know, people people are like, that was fun, that was a good job. I really thought you were like getting in the groove here. And I'm like, you know, shit I didn't ask for. Oh. Yeah, yeah I'd be like, I don't care. I don't care. It's done. Stop talking about it. I'll just I'll listen because um I got enough of them that I didn't ever ask, but you get enough of them, and it's like, well, every, a lot of people have different kind of views on this, so that's, uh-huh. a, I think that's a good thing, because that means that it can be taken in broader. Yeah, it don't matter. If but magic in editing, you'll see. I wanted to publicly say thank you I'll for you and, say and you're John welcome. Paul, uh, and then also, you know, you did a, a real savvy move, not letting me watch the first show before the second show. Yes. Because you know I'd fucking spaz out and obsess over probably the wrong shit. Well, yeah, that night, Friday night, you're like, I'm going to come over tomorrow, we're going to watch some game film. I was like, mm-hmm. <laughs> Well, I, I feel like that's... And it started raining, sh- I was like, maybe you shouldn't come because it's raining. <laughs> oh, oh, was that it? I thought it was just because... <laughs> no, I didn't want you to watch it because yeah. I already said, you know. No, you're right. I tell you what, you made me, <laughs> you made me laugh legitimately out loud so hard before the show. On Sunday, when it was hot as fuck in, in the green room, and you're like, I'm just going to sit in my car. So I hear that in my mind, and I'm thinking, the AC's not working. He's going to be cool. And then I realize, the AC in your car is not working either. Nope. So I went out to check and see how you're doing, and Dad I opened wagon. the door, and what song do I hear? We Need a Hero. Holding out we for a hero. a hero. Excuse me. Holding out for a hero. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't have it. Miss Bonnie but, Tyler yeah. Taylor. Yeah, I mean, it, it, that's, like that. that, that song gets I me went out up. there to ask you something. <laughs> forgot. It, and you know to it, the, to, I still don't remember. You well, know what? It, probably, important. it did look like the deer hunter scene, the roulette scene, probably in my car. There's just shit everywhere. I'm sweaty. There's mosquitoes. <laughs> yeah. You had a, a little tiny I, shit <laughs> fan. I had these in gross between little your fans. Leg. Yeah, I couldn't. I couldn't even open the like. People are. Walking wherever they want into the green room to the back, whatever, you know, mm-hmm. whatever, because, you know, it's an unconventional s- spot. So I should have expected that. But uh, after both shows, very uh, overwhelmed because like people are like trying to talk to you immediately after. Right. And I'm worried about like, did we get it? Like, plus I need like a, I need like 30 seconds to not talk, <laughs> you know, I've been talking for an hour straight alone. Basically. Yeah. Well, in the second show I had to speed through, I probably did like. 80 minutes of normal material and I try to speed through it without really going too, too fast. Yeah. Cause I'll trip over words, but I think he did a good job. Uh, and John Paul or sometimes producer, mm-hmm. sometimes third mic on this show. Yeah. Uh, he did a great job too. Chicken. Well, y'all, y'all really acclimated to, you know, what was, you, you played what the defense gave you. Yeah. Well, I will say, thank God it was Sunday that, the show was running behind and no AC and all that because, like I said, like Friday, you know, we were good. Like, even if we only had Friday, we would have been okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, w- I was trying not to kick the shit out of myself for not preparing as much as I should have, you know? What, I mean, what more could you have done? Some of those bits are really old that I wanted to get in there so I can just never have to do them again, really. You know, you could have just not done them. Well, I mean, they're good. They're just not, you know, it's one of those things where I had to re-listen to my own sets from back in the day to, like, memorize it like I have an oral presentation mm. in college, you know? That's all the great stand-up comedians look at it that way. Well, they, they actually, a lot of them have I'm to I'm going to go that. do my oral presentation. But a lot of the material I've moved forward past, like, I'm not, I don't do it, like, ever. Anymore. Yeah. Like, I, I, there's a good thing, right? Um, but it was like, well, I mean, two girls, one cup of coffee ain't going to really hit forever. No, but it's fun. <laughs> it's, it's, I if think, you get it, if you get it, but that's, that's, a, that one is not, that's a setup to a bigger one, but yeah, that's like a setup joke to a bigger joke. Yeah. 
Um, but that's, you know, that's a, a pun joke. So it's punny. It might not make it. <laughs> it might not make it in there. Who knows? Yeah. Don't worry. I mean, I'm also the editor. So like, not worried about it at all. Yeah. Uh, and also, I like that you were doing the, like, you were already on Saturday after the first show, the Friday show, you were already looking at, like, you already got the video out. I was like, I'm not going to ask if you got all the shit off the memory cards or if everything's charged for Sunday and all that shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it was, it was a nice relief. So I wanted to make sure I made a point to uh, say thank you. Well, I did make a point that day to be like, here, here is proof that it was recorded. Yeah. Because I know for you, you're like, I, that would help. Like, you're not asking for it. I know you weren't asking right. for it. Peace but of mind. If yeah. I'm you, you and I have very similar feelings for so- certain things where it's like, if I was in your position, I'd want, it'd be cool to just be like, okay, all right, it's there. Well, I put know. a lot of trust in you, but it's one of those things, it can't hurt to ask to make sure we got the framing, you know, everything, all the stuff's off the cards. But after you showed me a, like a shot, a screenshot of you looking at it, I was like, okay. Uh, and you've, you've told me several times, stop, stop worrying about it. I got it. Well, my really, the, and that, that really helps me. The much. number one thing that I was like, that responsibility I felt was making sure you felt relaxed and funny. Yeah. Cause really like all the other stuff really wasn't, especially Sunday. It was like, we knew everything we needed to do. We knew where our, like how to set it up, but just knowing how much you had built it up. You've got me the worst to like kind of spaz resting bitch face moments before I got on stage. Yeah. The time I proposed on stage <laughs> and you got me in the bathroom. And I was like, I'm going to fucking throw up or pass out. <laughs> like I've never had this before. Like I've never been, that was the most nervous I've ever been before going on stage. Yeah. But then it like that, this, what is it? Two weekends ago when we shot, it was like, just, I, my face is resting bitch face. Cause I'm trying to, in my head, memorize every, the, the I everything. Yeah. It was weird for me. Cause it was like, I knew that you weren't going to do your best if that's how you were being. No. But at the same time, I was like, I don't know if there's any way around it. Once you get on stage, it kind of wipes away. Right. Like I've had the flu and thrown up like 10 minutes before going on stage and you power through it mm-hmm. for whatever reason. Same with like, I've gotten like I've gotten bad calls like someone died that is a friend of mine right before going on stage shit like that and you're like oh fuck mm. and you have to like all right don't talk about this this is, you don't have anything funny about this so you know like just get on there and get get the first couple jokes out and you'll yeah. get rolling yeah I'd say don't go and talk about it right away well my inclination would be to be like here's what's going on <laughs> listen I'm and then be see with you guys. Well, that's why I like riffing because sometimes like the best is the best stuff sometimes is like getting backed into a corner and like trying to go, all right, I can figure this out. But sometimes it did not all material or it's thoughts. A big swing. Yeah. It's uh, I heard Jim Carrey read a Playboy interview like back in the day. Jim Carrey would go to the comedy store one summer with nothing prepared and he had to do like, I don't know, 15 minutes set every night, every night in the summer. And he did it with nothing. And I was like, I always think about that. And he's like two thirds of the time he bombed ass. Yeah. And then, but the one third he fucking annihilated harder than he's ever done. So I don't know. Um, but there's something to that. Yeah. And then now I got to put my, uh, marketing hat on for this, which, um, what's it called? I think the one thing I just wanted to make a point of, I think we can submit it to Amazon and some other streamers. There's ways to do that. Yeah, I know. The but, problem with all that shit, like I'm gonna have to. I just want it for the for the little badge that says it's on Amazon. I don't care. Yeah, no, I know. I'm thinking do a with pro- that shit. I have to like just figure out the correct like whatever codec or fucking format that they need specifically. Yeah, but um, you know we'll premiere it, and then I was thinking just embed it on or a website, the YouTube, you know, video. Where are we gonna we gonna have a premiere party? We should have a premiere party. Yeah, I'll, I won't watch it, but yeah, I'll walk outside. I don't want to have – that would be weird. That would be a weird narcissism. Let's have a party for that it. That means I have to plan it. That's fine. You have the party house. It gives us a reason. Oh, we do it here? <laughs> somewhere. We can do it somewhere else. But I'm saying, like, as soon as it's on, I'm going to walk out of the room. and then I'll, That's fine. Yeah. That, I Me think, too, probably. I think that would be insane if I was, like, dead center, but, like, ha, me, you know? 
Yeah. Um, but what I was going to say is a uh, friend of the program, John J. Murray, uh, he's got his special. He knows how to do that. He know. did a premiere party. I know. We'll do one. He probably watched it and laughed at his own jokes. He likes himself, I think. Um, oh. What the other part is, uh, we can upload it. Here's a tip I've heard. Upload it ahead of time as a private video. If you're worried about any copyright or any, not worried. It, I know, but any just anything. You never know, right? Just anything that's like it could get, just flag. You do it as a private video first, so it it's, oh, so gets that it runs through, through their filters. And this stuff. is for any video, really. Yeah. If you're if you're worried about that, yeah, getting dinged or anything for your channel, you put it as a private first, and then it'll tell you. I'll tell you what, man. A lot of podcasts like the ones that are bigger on youtube they straight up are like bleeping out cuss words not even cuss words like i know uh, i was watching they they blocked out the word rape yeah yeah like that's to get monetized though i get that yeah we we don't worry about that (laughs) no i know we're far away from that um i i get that i'm just (laughs) saying like it's odd you know, that like... Well, because it's bots. It's just bots sweeping. This is a bigger picture problem. But it's also the the virus that went around a couple of years ago. I'm not going to say it because I don't want us to get flagged. Right. That, that'll get Ebola. You. There's like weird... There's a weird set of words that YouTube will flag you for. Yeah. But, I mean, that's why we got to get our Patreon going. That's where the real... I want to launch a rocket through it. I like that one. <laughs> um, what else uh, for you? I was thinking about. I was listening. I was speaking to podcasts and listening to. I was listening to Tuesdays with Stories while I was stuck um, in the rain, just dumping rain. I don't give a shit. I was like, even if an Uber picks me up to get to their car, I'll just be just fucking look like I went on a flume ride. Yeah. Anyways, um, they were, they were talking about homeless, and I. I had this, you know, when you get it like a, a good bit idea or like some kind of idea to ruminate on, I'll pause it and fast forward through it. They, it started with talking about homeless and like, it's in every city. Uh-huh. And I was thinking about it. I was like, how do we, how do we solve? I want to, I wanted to pitch this as kind of a thought experiment. How do you solve this homeless problem in every, it's every city. It's not whatever, whatever city you're listening to this in, it's there. So, like, before we started the show, you said, I've got stuff. I've got, yeah. This is you one. You want us to solve the homeless problem? Yeah. I got some ideas. I can carry this. Do we have a pad? I feel like we should write some nah. something down. Nah, you got this. Okay. And I did see. What is step one? I did see you had the, the MRE packs. Yeah. That prepared uh, to give out. That's really cool. The, yes, those, you know. Those are a step, but they remain homeless after I give them one. No, I know, I know. But I'm saying it's cool that you're doing that. That's a cool volunteering thing or altruistic thing you do. And it's, it's a lazy man's version. No, no one does that. I know, but like... It's effort in a good direction. How about that? I appreciate that. I'm just saying, like, if you're lazy like me in certain aspects, this is a way around it. <laughs> oh, you think you have like a... a, a... Like a, I don't want to get up and go to a soup kitchen. I'm saying this is your Mendoza line. This is like this is like your Mendoza line is the right terminology. You know what I'm saying? Like you're just hitting above 200. No, I know what the Mendoza line is. I'm saying I'm, I don't think it applies here. For you personally, that's your personal like. Um, this is just minimum. my my own take on what I can do. I can definitely do more. Should do more. But this is what I got for now. Yeah, yeah. Um. Well, I was thinking about it. So, like, what do you do, right? State-run institutions. Those were a thing for a while. Mm-hmm. You know, the idea of it makes sense, right? Bring them back. But then you're like, you're. I'm already like, well, they don't. the money doesn't get spent well there. Yeah. I, I have an idea. I'm going to pitch it to you. Don't worry. This is leading to something okay. stupid. <laughs> but so, could, not a real solution. Could be genius. I'm sitting here trying to think of real solutions. Well, so what do we got? We got drug addicts and we have... Well, my step one was legalize all drugs. So... Take all that money you do you use on 
illegalizing it and use it for treatment. I wanted to touch on this in the last episode we recorded. We, the thing with, I, I'm down with decriminalizing it, right? Here's my problem with it. You can't do it overnight. Well, no. You gotta, it's got to be a slow burn to that, right? In what way? Like, all right. There's got to be a day when the, flip, the switch is flipped. I know, but we'll call it a, in four years it'll, you know, Big Daddy Donnie T gets the presidency again. And he goes, all right, it's a four-year plan. By the end of my term, it'll, they'll be decriminalized. That would almost make sense to me. Because I look at the both extremes. If you do it 10 years, that's way too long. Right. But why do you need to go like why do you need to well, think about parse it, it out? Think about it if you flip that switch right away. It's mm-hmm. gonna have like like it's gonna be the purge out there. You think? Why? Uh because I I don't know. I wouldn't if you're addicted to stuff, wouldn't you just go fuck yes and just go nuts? The people who are addicted to stuff are already getting their shit. I know, but it when it's con- it's convenience era. We're in that era. It's very convenient for them. I'm sure they probably I, hang out near where they get it. Sometimes, yes, uh, but like I'm talking about maybe the ones that aren't homeless. See, to me, that's just like this. Uh, I'm just, I look, it makes it, it's like most adults are, it won't change that much. If all drugs were legalized tomorrow, I'd be like, cool. I don't know. I, believe, I already got all my drugs. I believe, uh, like all couple, the drugs I want to get, I get them, and then like I get. I choose not to get the other drugs. Well, I think yeah. uh, like hurdles do quell it a bit. You know, like when you had to buy weed back in the day, you had to be like, oh, okay, I got to go to this guy. Right. See how that I gotta, turned out. I got to listen to him talk about some fucking yeah, band. I don't care. I the stream cheese incident. Yes. I got to pretend I'm into it. Right. The you girlfriend gotta, is there. You guys got to keep doing this. I thought you're going to get a real job. Oh my God. You got to hang him out. Again. For, him again. Him right, again. For real. Right. And then you, got, you had to drive over there, drive back, all that shit. Yes. That's something like that's enough sometimes to go, fuck it. I don't, I don't need it today. Back, I'm talking back 20 years ago. Well, you're just assuming drugs are a problem. I'm saying that's one I'm part. I'm saying that, that's one part. You know, autonomous grown up adults, let's say they're like, oh, I'm going to get cocaine. I'm going to try it for the first time. I'm sure, there'll be some overdoses. But those dumbasses, like, you know, that it's not that hard to, like, if, if in turn, if things are all legalized and then you then have a uh, system of healthcare for treatment and or emergency situations without fault where you're going to get pers- like prosecuted for whatever it is. Yeah. That those things combined, I, I think most people would do drugs. They either would, it would not affect their life at all, or they would try it one time and probably be like, yeah, that's not for me. Yeah. That's most people. That's what I do. With and the, the coffee people that are, are homeless and addicted. It's, it's not going to make anything worse. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, let's, you're right on the right track of going, let's diagnose the problem. Right? Thanks. I, I agree with you, but I, there's, no, there's no answer, obviously. Like, I really have to think about that. Can you take that? Nah, I'm going to test it right now. So, but I think you're more in the right direction. You know, we're kind of that, if you've got a problem, we've got to solve it. Kind of Mark Wahlberg style. Is that, yeah. is that Marky Mark? You got a pro- no, that's criminalized. Oh, that's all I meant. Check out the hook on my DJ revolver. Yeah, my bad. It's, um... I'm not even paying attention. I'm not keep track of this shit. Dude, you're like a, you're like a multitasking queen. Yes, Thank queen. you. Yes, queen. So, it's got to be like, it's mental illness, there's drug problems. I, and I'm painting with broad strokes, obviously. Um... Also, like I was thinking about it, like I find it interesting. But again, the mental illness treatment. Right, I'm for that too. And they should, you know, they used to have asylums. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. I don't think there might be asylum. Well, that was like the state Call run something else, but Arkham Asylum. <laughs> no, I meant the asylum part. No, I know Arkham I... Treatment Center. But those weren't that. Why did those shut down? I, I didn't look into it. I just heard something. It's nefarious. I forget what happened, but there's something nefarious that happened. I want to say it might have had to do with prisons. Oh, private, private prisons. Oh. Mm-hmm. I want to say that somebody involved with prisons. Who was it? Wackenhut, maybe? Seriously. That fucking, that company, I think, as the much. security company? Yeah. 
Like, I think they're much more broad and uh, far-reaching than you expect. I think it's... I know what you're saying. I don't think it's Wacken Hut. Though. No, it is Wacken Hut. I think it's another one that's, like, adjacent to them. Uh-uh. Wacken Hut. Wacken Hut's the king. <laughs> I'm telling you, dude. Wacken Hut. Yeah. Nobody's ever, ever said that. Jack and Nut. <laughs> Does the comedy ever stop? So, I was... Uh, going backwards a little bit more... I find it interesting. This every city is dealing with this in the country. Yeah, I mean, it's not like a new problem. I know, but but part of the reason I left LA in like 2010, I was like, there is so many homeless people, and it, there's clearly no effort to do anything. About oh, I thought it. you were gonna say because you were homeless. No, no, no. It was like it. It was like I lived in uh, Marina del Rey, right next to Venice Beach. You'd walk up to Venice Beach. It's all tents. It's all R, like shitty RVs parked. And they only move it once a week for the street sweeper kind of thing. Yeah. Near, near Gold's Gym where I used to work out with Lou Ferrigno, my boy. <laughs> it's crazy. He was in that gym, by the way. Right. And I'm the only one who's like, oh, quiet. my God. Oh, my he God. He wanted the peace and quiet. Um, I, well, he, I would annoy him sometimes. That's a death joke. Yeah. And so um, what's it called? So it's like I find it crazy every city deals is dealing with this in kind of epic proportions. That's one. Two, I was thinking about, I never feel shittier than when I have my windows down with the kids in the car and <laughs> a homeless guy scares the shit out of me asking for money at the stoplight. That's what the bags are for. And then I just go, but I, I've, I've definitely like been like, get the fuck away from their window or I'll end you. I've definitely had like a freak out. Yeah. And then like, it's like a silent, like, 20 minutes in the car with the kids. Yeah, like, I mean... Oh, dad can flip like that. Mm. And th- But I feel shitty that I reacted to that person that way. Yeah, that's the part that... But my know, baboon... You don't want to teach. The baboon side of me is like, protect the kids kind of thing. I get it. Plus, I'm startled. Don't scare me. Yeah. I mean, it is a thing. It's important to... Especially if you're with your kids, have a normal interaction with the people so that they don't... <laughs> see them as different 99% of the time I say no thank you or sorry don't have anything Um, so I find that interesting and then now we get to like all right, solution and this is where my mind went a little nuts Uh, I got home and was smoking a little bit here's what we do here's my plan we Lake Okeechobee you ever been? seen it on a map right we we're we're Floridians, born and raised, forty years old. We don't even we don't get near that area. It's scary. It's haunted. We're gonna put so what all the states are gonna do is like back in the day, I think like California used to get sent or used to send their homeless out to other states. I think they used to get it sent. That was part of a prank war between governors. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know, and like they bet on the Super Bowl. <laughs> right. <laughs> Um, yeah, so that used to happen like the Reagan era, I think, back in the day. It would ship uh, I think it's people. happened recently, actually. I think it happened recently is probably why I was thinking about it. Now, it's a matter of time before every state just goes, fuck it, we'll send it to Florida. And we're like, we're like a fantasy football commissioner. We're like, hey, guys, take it easy. And they're like, fuck you. We're sending, like, you're treated as the most thankless state. You're, we're going to take the brunt of it in this scenario. Are you proposing drowning all the homeless people in Lake Okeechobee? Whoa, whoa, dude, whoa, no! This is your idea. Don't whoa me. Have some humanity. No, I've got an idea. Okay, then what we're going to do around the perimeter of the lake, we're going to start putting more retirement communities around there. We're going to space them out, right? Are you proposing building a floating island and putting all the homeless people on a floating island and letting these retired people get their golf clubs out, put out? You put out a bunch of little green mats all around the outside of the lake, and then you let them hit golf balls at them. Is that what you're proposing that's right now? Pretty, that's might be better than what I had. <laughs> like super top golf. We might have an idea. <laughs> Senior tour top golf. Yeah. Uh, so stakes are never been higher. So we're gonna we're, we're gonna make a perimeter. It's if anybody doesn't know, Lake Okeechobee is a it's swamp. It's a one million gallon lake. It's huge. It's more than a million gallons. Uh, billion. I mean, right? Is it a million? You said million. Could be a trillion. I don't know. I think it's a billion. It's huge. Billion sounds better. It's in a swamp, right? It's unlivable land for the most part. Like, no one wants to live there because it's just, there's not, it's just swamp land. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. So mostly unused. 
That's the way I look at it. Now, we're going we're gonna to set up more retirement communities down there. We're going to space them out, right? We're going to do a little Hunger Games-ish with the homeless that get dropped off. Here it comes. <laughs> well, they get dropped off. We're going we're gonna to set up facilities, mental health stuff, all that. But I think I'm back on this convenience thing. I think if it's hard to get, get out of, like, it's hard to get drugs if you're at the lake, you know, at a, a institution way out in the docks. So camps, you want internment camps? No, no, mental health facilities, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, wink. We got to give them jobs. Well, first off, retirement communities. The dudes at the retirement communities, old guys. Yeah, make them all butlers. No security. I like butlers better. <laughs> well, I mean that's optional for sure. But I'm saying, the old guys. Messed out butler, best butler ever. What old guy doesn't love being some kind of security of some sort? Wait, like, hey, old guy? Are you talking about the retirement community? Yeah, yeah. We're gonna hire. They're gonna get part time jobs. Give the guys something to do. Give the old guy something to do. What does this have to do with homeless people? The, they're going to be adjacent to these mental mental facilities for the homeless. <laughs> What's the retirement community aspect? Why are you putting those together? Because we're going to make it. You're work. just trying to get all the people you don't want to be around in one spot. Correct. Oh, so just say that at the beginning. Well, that, that's not really the motive, but you kind of buttoned it in a, in a concise mm -hmm. way. So we're going to give the old guys jobs security they love old guy dude you got no hair or salt salt silver hair you love going hey get that shit out of here you know right that's all they're doing knock it off right walmart greeters are gone we, they need something to do these old guys need something to do mm -hmm. we also hire high school football coaches <laughs> you know as part time they come in no one loves telling people what to do more than an assistant shitty part-time high school football there's an abundance of them right and you're saying how do we do that during the football season you know they, we do it like a, a fireman you know they work like two days in a row and then they come back to wherever they live in like doral florida or something right doral got it Dorel, doral you know how to say it right i think it's Dorel. <laughs> so we, uh, we've set up like a Sim City around the lake, right? So now it's not even real. Well, it's a simulated... I'm, I'm trying to paint a picture with my words. If you build it out in this kind of scenario, like a CAD design, this is kind of how it looks in my head. Now, here's what we do. Tell we, you what, I don't even understand step one of we this got, shit. We got to start getting them skills, right? These, these homeless people. Where are they living? We've got... Look. Think of think of Lake Okeechobee and like an outer ring. Yes, it goes like retirement facility, miles away, uh, institution, miles away, retirement community, all the way around the lake, just uh -huh. like that. Right now, what the hell does the lake have to do with this? Because it's unused land, and no one wants to go there. So we're using it properly. They already do that. They already use shitty land for stuff like that. Just hear me out. This is if we get an influx from other states. We're going to have to deal with it. It's you and me? No, Florida as, no. as a state. Now. Let me handle it. Now, as part of, we can't, sa we can't save everybody, right? But part of, part of your treatment to get better is if you do want to have skills, like learn something, we set up animal rescue shelters as jobs for them. Who's better with the home who's better with like stray dogs than homeless guys? It's the old joke of like I feel bad for the dog. Every, mm -hmm. Like every comedian in the 80s did that. Right? Yeah, there's so many holes. Right? In this idea. Yeah, but they're great. It's they're great with feral dogs. Yes, maybe. And cats. How is that animal control? Well, we have an overabundance everywhere too of like uh, They take these animals in and they care for them. They don't they couldn't do the the dirty deed that they'd eventually have to do. We well, gotta you gotta work your way up, but I'm saying like gotta find an executioner. No, I'm what? I'm no, I'm talking about. Yeah. I don't want them to get killed. This is for rescues that have nowhere to go. They take care I'm of. Talking them. about the animals, not the people. Yeah, I'm talking about the animals too. Uh oh, this isn't really that. Maybe we should rescue people. Who rescues who? That's gonna be that. That's gonna be the slogan of the place. Thank you. You're getting it. Okay. So, so we got that. Then, 
if we have if we find any family member related to the homeless people down in this area, we have to their parents if their if the parents are still around alive, they have to fly in once a month and visit this place, mandated or they get arrested. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm listening. Okay, you're doing the fucking other camera. I didn't think you'd notice. And then uh, for entertainment for this for these guys, you know, get we've got an abundance. You of, and me, we do seven shows a week. That's what I'm saying. Back, oh man, sta- like amateur stand-up comedy. There's a lot in Florida, or even better, we're lousy with wrestlers. We've got all these wrestlers that need a crowd. We should be wrestlers anyways. Let's talk about that, man. I can't wait I to do like roids. We could do it. I feel like we could do it. You're getting it. We're gonna do roids or HGH. We don't gotta do that. What, are you going to be a manager? No. In WWE? No. Do like a twink part. That w- do, Have they had like a gay duo? I think so. Have they really? I'm pretty sure. I don't think so. Not I mean, like, I stopped watching. But like, it not even if it's not really reference, is kind of a fun joke. What if we're like, uh, hey, Schmeigel, can we do ambiguous gay duo wrestlers? <laughs> Live <laughs> action. Can we borrow that? <laughs> or Or the birdcage? I feel like I saw some of them. I don't know. Anyway, I feel like it's been done. Anyway, that's my proposal. Okay, well, considering I, saved, I have zero idea of what you were actually proposing. I saved America. The um, audience got it. No, don't think they did. You got, but that's okay. It's okay. I think we did a lot of good work here today. Look, this is what think tanks uh, do. We're a think tank. Oh, that's right. <laughs> that's why we don't pay taxes. Girthy brain, dude. Yes. Well, whatever. We tried. Hey, you try to escape Lake Okeechobee? Python's getting you.